Quickly, let's get our first uh, discussion on the road, uh, everyone. The issue of uh, security in Nigeria and whether or not the declaration of uh, emergency would uh, answer all the questions associated with the situation that we are dealing with today in Nigeria. I'm joined by two gentlemen to help beat context and perspectives into this very timely discussion. From my immediate left is Felix Osaribe. He's a lecturer at the Department of History and International Studies here at the University of Benin. Good to have you on the program. And next to him is Christopher Ojekere, he's a public affairs uh, analyst. It's also a pleasure to have you on the program, Chris. Good morning. Good morning, yes. G gentlemen, uh, it's, it's always, I mean, we've had time to talk about issues of security on this program um, uh, for, I mean, last couple of weeks. And they say security has evolved in Nigeria, uh, obviously for the worse. Uh, while the world is busy raising funds for Sunday Boho in the southwest of the country, we have an unpleasant distraction up in the northern part of Nigeria. Uh, the issue of the kidnap of these uh, students. The Nigeria state government is saying that at least 27 students were kidnapped three teachers um, amongst those persons, all right? Uh, as it stands today, we can't put a finger on what the exact figure is. Uh, Chris, I wanted to walk us through what we were doing as a country before this whole uh, situation, uh, as it were, ballooned into what it is today. Well, um, as a country, we don't seem to have ever taken security seriously. We have never, in my opinion, given the kind of needed attention to security, especially modern security, as uh, more serious countries of the world had done. Because as soon as technology was introduced into the world, serious nations of the world understood that the first people to capture technology should be the government, and the reason the government has to do that is because the government should be able to control whatever form of security or insecurity that is implicative of the development of technology. Up until now, Nigerian security system cannot show you any meaningful form of technological security measures, either in policies or in practice. So before now, before the advent of this strange queer phenomenon which we have to deal with now, which is the banditry and the insurgency, we had this kind of manual, lema, muscle security. And that is why you find that even before this moment, when kidnapping just started, it wasn't the bandits that started kidnapping. Kidnapping had evolved from our social malaise and social inadequacies. When kidnapping started, we were able to identify at that time that the kidnappers were always a step ahead away of our security forces. And instead of the security forces to admit that they were failing their duty and inadequate in their performance, they will always come to lie to the public that they didn't pay ransom. Whereas for almost every case of kidnapping, security forces even took the money themselves. Are we, pay, the are we paying a price for that now? Yes, we are. For all of those inadequacy, incompetency, and lack of preparedness, when a huge, as I said, a queer phenomenon now came on the scene, we were not prepared. We were caught napping. And that's why you find so much devastation, apart from the fact that there is the phenomenon of this bandit getting tacit support from quarters where they are supposed to actually be you know, uh, checked and attacked. So we'll come to that. But I was just giving the scenario mm -hmm. of what the country was prior to this. Now, we have it on our hands. The bandits have moved in. As I said yesterday somewhere, I said they were surprised. They were pleasantly surprised at how easily they could overrun our forest and overrun our society. The surgeons have moved in. The terrorists had been operating, you know, uh, in the name of Boko Haram. And they have shown to the whole world and to these bandits that the country is weak in terms of security architecture. They have also shown to the world that there's a lot of lack of synergy between our security forces. And communication is weak among our security forces. And therefore, if you came to Nigeria, all you needed to do was to negotiate your security, you know, uh, to negotiate your insecurity advancement 
into the Nigerian security forces and you get a team for yourself mm -hmm. and you can operate freely. So the bandits came in here. They were in these visions when they came in. They came in here and started picking whole buses, traveling from Lagos to Benin, a humble buses I remember at that time, and so forth and so forth, and took them into the forest. And they got ransom paid. We even got a situation where we were told that a DPO paid ransom. So when that ransom were being paid and they realized that this is big business, what do you think it would do? It would encourage. The only thing that you need to do for criminality and evil mm. to continue to thrive is for good men to do nothing. Well, I've also so, seen situations where police authorities told us even yes. through their uh, uh, official spokespersons. Yes. They say, look, well, we're not aware they paid ransom. That, that's probably be between the family of the victim and those who did the, the kidnap. But, but yes. I, I was just going to ask you a follow-up question to that. Yes. There's now a particular concern yes. away from the, as it were, generic situa uh, security situation. Yeah. That look, for, for these bandits, as they are often called, to find the courage, the temerity to hit schools, whether they have boarding facilities or not, is only indicative of how much the situation has degenerated. Uh, as a matter of fact, some, a particular senator is now talking about how that is a particular forest that stretches all the way from the FCT through the Niger states into Zamfara. Uh, that poses a lot of threat, uh, a, a, a lot of, uh, uh, as it were, uh, a lot of threat in itself because we have been dealing with the, the Sambisa forest for a couple of years now. Since the issue of the Chibo girls came up, Sambisa forest has become a, a word in our everyday conversation. And now we're talking about another forest that stretches at least across three states. Uh, can we be fighting terrorists and forests at the same time? Um, the people you are dealing with are forest veterans. They have lived all their lives in the forest. And so when your security forces refuse to master your geographical you know, boundaries and master your geographical terrain, and they moved into our forest and realized how easy it was for them to take over our forest, mm. they have just increased in number. They are talking of that in the north because most of these people who have spoken, like the Senate president and all of that, are from the north, so they understand the north. They don't understand what is going on in those states. I can tell you that when my friend was kidnapped, the kidnapper told my friend, he was kidnapped in Nisham between Igweba and Ewohimi. He told my friend that this forest leads to Portacot and that they are heading for Portacot if your family you know, does not do something fast. He said that railway line that is in Nisham, there's an obsolete railway line in Nisham, goes to Portacot. The Fulani guy knew it. So the point is, when you are talking of security, Security is not what they call road shows here and show of force. You know, when I, I, I usually laugh when I see that. You find that the, there's a security challenge in the town, and then they say the, the presidency have dispatched, you know, uh, the IG has dispatched crack team policemen, and then they begin to cause traffic jam all over the city, and they say they are showing force. The force should be shown where the action is. The force should be shown in the forest. Right now, Nigerians' insecurity is concentrated in the forest. Hmm. And to prove your security competence and to prove to Nigerians that you are worth what you are being paid for, the security people should head for the forest. I remember the example of Burutai. When Burutai was appointed as uh, uh, the security chief, chief of, of the army, staff. yes, he relocated to Maiduguri. I mean, in principle, that was intelligent, and in principle, that has some effect. You see that after the army, the new uh, service chief have been appointed now, they, they have tried to do one or two flashes to give him the impression that this is, will always continue to be like this, but it didn't always continue to be with Burutai. So what we want to see is rather than these city road shows, they call show of force, the security people should head for the forest. I want to see that the president of the country and the security forces gives us a roadmap, gives us an action plan, a Marshall plan to say, look, now we have been able to understand who the bandits are. We have been able to understand their route. And these are their routes. This is how they operate. This is where they came from. This is where they get their weapons. Mm. This is where they get the vehicles that convey them. This is where they get the, all the sophisticated weapons that they have. And then we have put measures in place. And in three weeks' time, we can assure you we shall be doing this and we shall be doing that. There's no such plan. There's no such roadmap. There's no such discussions where somebody said what they are doing now is discussion. They are just discussing and discussing. Security is not discussion. Security is action. Insecurity is action. People are dying in the Forest right now. People died in the forest in the, in the Udo area of Orion you know, a few weeks ago. People are still dying in the forest. People were kidnapped in uh, Lagos Road a few weeks ago. So it is not. The police have been trained. They are not just being trained. They've gone through police college. And when you go through police college, you are being trained to tackle the security. The military has been trained to secure the territorial integrity of Nigeria. They are not just being trained. So what's all the talk about? They should go out there and do the work for which they have been trained. 
And you have terrorist uh, uh, branch of the police force. You have you have uh, counter uh, terrorism uh, branch of the military and uh, the uh, Department of State Intelligence. What are they doing in the city talking with us? They should be in the forest because the banditry has their headquarters in the forest and they are operating in the forest. I'm I can assure you that if you go into any of the forests in Edo State and elsewhere, you will be shocked at the number of kidnapped victims. Don't talk of dead bodies. You stumble, you know, uh, into when you are going into the forest. Somebody you asked know? a question yes. during the day, with just a bumping on you, uh, whether or not it's rocket science to get into this forest. Yes. I mean, if farmers can go there, if hunters can go there, yes. if, if kidnappers themselves, yes. who obviously have blood in their veins, like everyone else can go there, what makes it uh, impossible for us to do the same? But let me turn to you now, Felix. Uh, insecurity has become a concern for everybody. And now the Senate is categorically calling on President Muhammadu Buhari to say, look, you are the number one man in this country, amongst other things, as it has to do with security of lives and property. So declare states of emergency. Does that answer the questions we are asking? Point blank, no. Why, sir? That's not an answer. I, I want to thank the kind of passion. I want to latch onto that passion that my co-discussant has expressed now. Mm. I, I, I think we, we've, Nigeria has become an expression of what we call the deep state. And in the deep state, you have the majority of the persons in the state, the citizens, who are just functioning at the expense of a minute number, a small minority, that we plan and plan and plan and utilize all measures to keep the majority head, head bound down to certain machinations. And these are very, very interesting times that we are living in Nigeria. And I, I, I want us to look deeply, because as he rightly said, the only place you are a bit safe now in this country is when you are in the urban settings. And this is the danger of Nigeria. Nigeria has now been polarized into two states, the urban state and the rural state. So in the rural state, there is no semblance of governance. There is no appearance of authority. People have been left on their own. And in the urban centers, of course, you see a lot of people in urban centers, they buy their own firearms. They put wall around their homes. They buy dogs. So they've created an idea of security. And that's the last like mentioned too. When you see police and military men, it is always in the city you see them displaying their power, their, power, their prowess, their capacity. Most times, you ask yourself, if they are this good, why are we still having so much insecurity? It is because they've directed their attention at the symptom, not at the cause. And let us now go to what we call cause and effect. What is the cause of insecurity in Nigeria? It is because government has decided not to do its duty to the people. The primary obligation of government in any society is the security of lives and property. That is the first duty of government. If government fails in that regard, in some developed countries, in most developed countries, and before now, historically, that has been the reason why many governments have been toppled. The capacity of the Nigerian to tolerate is phenomenal. That is why we are still discussing it as it is now. We do not advocate anarchy. But where we are today is on the verge. We are at the brink. And international studies, what we call this is brinkmanship. You put right. yourself at the edge. You are looking to the abyss. Because the abyss is so deep, you cannot even fathom what's at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Nigerian government has pushed society to that point. And let us bring it back to the simple things that we can do. The Senate does not need to declare self emergency. Many a time. They are not before, declaring. They are asking the president to declare. They cannot even. They are just. Let me say, they are pandering to, to, to the gallery. That is what we normally see in Nigeria. Many senators in the northeastern part of this country, they've not been to their constituency for years. They cannot go home. If they are both, they should enter their convoy and go home. They won election in IDP camps, not in their constituencies. I think, I think we, we, see, we, we've been playing with this matter. The Nigerian government is adopting the Austria push. This problem will come, it will go away. It can go away. Uh, let, let the people say what they want to say. We will do what we want to do. It's a paternalistic government that says the father knows all. Children cannot say anything. That's the way government is seen in Nigeria. That's why the police and the army will still be talking, telling you stories. We already know what is wrong. Now let us make it easy and simple. William of Ockham will always say, as he then said, that the simplest answer is always the correct one. What is the simplest answer in this matter? What is the cause for insecurity? Insecurity has been caused by the fact that government has not been doing its duty. Who are the victims? The common man on the street, the laborer, the farmer, the woman that goes to weed in her farm, they are the victims. What is the immediate effect? Lives are being lost, 
production has gone down in terms of farming. Mm -hmm. What is the long-term effect? Food insecurity is now the latest challenge in Nigeria. Food is very expensive in this country. We are pretending because we see imports. But we do know that things are not okay. What do we do? You mentioned the Osman that the Osman said there's a link from Ishanla to Portacot. Well, geographically, that is not true correct. But because they walk through the bushes, they believe all bushes are the same. Sincerely, I did geography in secondary school. And I can tell you as a city, I've had cause to say it on this program before, that insecurity that we are seeing in Nigeria, it really doesn't need rocket science to solve it. We already know. Let us come to what we know. Every land in every community is owned by people in that area. Right or wrong? Right. Okay. They also know their terrain. Hmm. I cannot go to maybe Ujogba and tell people in Ujogba their territory. They know. If you go to Ewoimi, the people in Ewoimi, they know their farmland. If you go to Ewato, the same thing. If you go to Udo, you go to any part of Yokoromo. Those communities, they know. If you go to Ovia down the road here, even if it is just uh, my 18 here, the people in that area, they know. So they know their farmland. They also know their forest. What has happened so far is that because there has been this rural urban drift, most of the farms have been abandoned. And nature does not allow vacuum. So as you abandon it, what happens? People move in. Who are those people moving in? They are these people we call bandits today. Now, the government, even, I will be able to say it here, Governor Erufai, National Erufai of Kaduna State, once mentioned that some, they know some people that have been killing Nigerians, they pay them, they expected them to stop. So we know people in this country who have openly said they know those who are killing people. And they are government officials. They are high persons in the state. Those who detect policy. Those who are in charge. Let us use that Nigerian language. Mm. So if they are in charge and they know these people, what have they done to rein them in? We have the army to defend the territory integrity of the country. And we keep hearing that our borders are porous. So you begin to ask, do we actually have people in charge in government? Because if they do, all these things that they are saying, because they are not feeling the impact directly, they begin to explain it away. If every government official, as we would normally say jokingly, that it is un unless a big man dies on a bad road, that road is never giving attention in time. That's the Nigerian mentality. So because it has not reached the people who are in charge hmm. in their cozy estates, and palaces in the urban centers. That's why they are trivializing insecurity. And insecurity is something you don't play with because as it continues to snowball, it's like it's turning to an avalanche already. That's why every part of the country, of course, we used to joke with it in the northeast, Boko Haram. Now we move down to the northwest. All the forest. It, it is appalling to read every day. If, if you wake up and check news, oh, bandits killed 21 persons, bandits killed 72, bandits captured 21 persons, did a video, posted it, and in 2021, somebody will tell me that you cannot trace that video. You see, if you put anything on the internet, let us bring it technology now, mm. there is a protocol. Yes. The internet protocol will detect exactly what kind of phone, what mm. time, the camera, everything will be seen in less than 10 seconds. It is not difficult. Wherever you posted it from, your uplink, it will show. Mm. We have DSS. We have DMI. We have NIA. All these are intelligence agencies, and they are supposed to use intelligence. It's not brute force. In the, in the Nigerian context, we still see these people as those that can use brute force, use their gun, use their gun butt to shoot. Most of these don't need military solution. What you need is intelligence. If you were to deploy soldiers to the forest, if let me use the word, if, because that's actually his police duty, international mm. duty of the police. If we're able to deploy policemen to the forest, every forest has been mapped in this country. We've done mapping of this country long ago. These, these are still there. The, the land size has not changed. All you are saying is that people have moved in. Who are those who moved in? Where are they moving from? Where they get food from? Where they get food from? Because most of the time they use motorcycles. They do videos. They even post their, very interesting, they post their videos. Mm. They'll be doing sci-fi. They will be recording themselves. They'll be posting it to you to say that we are in charge here. Because they are seeing clearly that nobody is actually dealing with them. Communities have to now pay to these bandits to go to farm, to go and harvest their crops. In some cases, get clearance from them. Well, technically, it, it is that they are not in charge of those areas. Mm. So they are now the government. They are co collecting taxes. Then they will write letters to the committee and tell the committee, if you don't bring so-and-so amount, we will visit you at night. So if we have an organized security architecture which is supposed to be the norm all you need to do this area is this you simply do it what we call compartmentalization you square up this area fix this one square up this one fix the other one, fix the other one the problem is that even within security forces there's great compromise okay. that's why i use the word the deep state yeah. because 
even those that are be given the duty, mm. they are now the problem. They are not part of the problem. They are not even solving it. They are the problem because if they were to rise to the occasion and say, we have drawn the line, this is the red line, mm. enough. So whether they declare emergency, even they call the president, the same president they invited that time to discuss the security, he refused. So they can also send a message and say, please declare state of emergency. What will the state of emergency do? The state of emergency will simply enrich those people who are in the security architecture again because they will simply come back as we rightly said, block all the roads again, make everybody in the city uncomfortable. They will never go to the place where the problem is, which is in the forest. Okay, uh, let, let's see how much you can go to where the problem is. Uh, the Senate President, Ahmed Lawan, has said that the armed forces have their own problems, uh, Chris, and he says uh, they have problem of uh, uh, dearth of funding, equipment in most cases are obsolete and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, should we be having this kind of conversation in 2021? You know, apart from 2021, why is it that every time we are talking about problem, it is always such as look to government making funds available so that that problem could be solved. How much has the Buhari, there's no government before Buhari that has invested in security uh, provision of uh, budget, mm. uh, security budget like uh, Buhari? What results have we got? The truth of the matter is that the country, we can continue to talk and talk. The more you are discussing the problem, the more it's becoming elusive. And the reason why it is elusive is because you have a country that is indeed heterogeneous in thinking, in culture, and in religion. And because the religion and culture of the North is cohesive and in that cohesion, antithetic to that of the South and the thinking in the South, every time you have issues of national um, magnitude like this, you have so much talk because each one is trying to give solutions according to his own worldview. It's a very simple matter. As Enunaya said in the Senate, he said it's a very simple matter of criminals and criminality. And that's what my colleague just said. It's a very simple matter of dealing with criminality. Now, this is what happens. This is an emergency already. The president doesn't have to declare it an emergency before it's an emergency. We know it's an emergency. Those who are losing their children and their wives and the family know it's an emergency. Now, the emergency thing you can do here that will make any sense is for you to deploy with your so-called so executive order with which you have de deployed so many things. Deploy and devolve powers to the state governors to act to protect their state in this emergency situation. The Constitution can give the president that power. He is the commander of the, of the, of the armed forces. He can delegate and deploy and divest some of those powers to the state governors. And say, okay, now whatever, situ whatever security, you know, uh, what they call the strategy, you think that can stop this banditry in your state, you have the right permission to do it. Let's see. Let's watch you for the next three months. And then the state forces, security uh, uh, forces, are at your disposal to do so. We have the fourth mechanized division here. We have all sorts of military barracks here. We have Nagida Brother, we have here. We have the commissioner of police, and we have the police division here. We have the SSA in Edo State. If we were to give such powers to Obaseki, for instance, Edo State people would sit down and strategize on how to deal with security in our bushes. It will take us only three days to end insecurity in our forests. The point is that we have a concentric government where power is concentrated in the hand of the presidency. And unfortunately, we have a presidency that has not answered the question of the Southwest governor. The Southwest governor has said to the president, and it's there on your TV, prove to Nigerians that you are not complicit, that you do not support criminalities, and criminal elements, that you do not support banditry. You prove that to Nigeria. Nigerians are in their need of that proof from Mr. President. His body language and his reaction, whether willing or unwilling, whether advertent or inadvertent, so far has not convinced any reasonable thinking in Nigeria that the President wants to deal with insecurity in this country. So the Senate asking him to declare state of emergency, as my colleague here said, is just to create another problem problem of movement to further, to further, you know, emasculate our economy. And then the police will just get richer. When they see you walking from your house to the next door neighbor, you pay for it. They say it's a state of an emergency. 
So it is not a state of emergency. The Constitution has given the president the mandate, the power, and then has put it at the president's disposal the sovereign authority given by Nigerians to act on their behalf to protect lives and property. He does not need a state of emergency to do so. I am saying that the president has not shown us a policy paper since this thing started and has snowballed into this kind of precipice that we are in to say, okay, this is a Marshall plan that we have brought out. Do we have any such thing in the public space? So we don't have that. So there is strong suspicions from Nigerians and the president needs to debunk that that he truly means to deal with banditry. And he has a pedigree of somebody who has done it before, so we won't, we won't say he's confused. When he was a military general, he did not only drive the Matisine insurgents out of Nigeria, he actually went into the Niger Republic, and he had to be called back by the president. He is the one who told us with his, his uh, deputy then in this, that Nigeria is the only country that we have, and we must stay here and salvage it together. Are we salvaging Nigeria now from the way things are going on and this kind of insecurity? He's the one that said so. When he thought that his people, he thought, it was just a thinking. He had no evidence whatsoever that his people were being killed in Oyo State in the, in the days of Lama Deshina. The president led a, a huge entourage of Fulani extraction, including Jeremiah, who had been a governor of Lagos State. State. So Lam Adesina's office in Oyo State, not to ask him, but to accuse him that they are killing his people. And Lam tactically, because facts speak for themselves. You don't have to manufacture facts. Hmm. Put all the facts on the table. Called witnesses. And they felt highly embarrassed. When he thought, that is the same president. So now I am wondering why Yoruba leaders, South-South leaders, are not leading a delegation to Astro Rock to tell the president that his people are killing our people. The way he led a delegation to Lama Deshina's office. I wonder why our leaders are not doing so. Because our people are killed. We have evidence. There are graphics. There are, go to mortuaries. You see how many have been killed. Our leaders should lead a delegation to the president. If the president is not getting conventional information from his conventional sources, let us assume that he's AIDS. Let us assume that he doesn't watch television. Hmm. Somebody needs to go to Asorok and tell him uh, that uh, yeah, his people in the forest... I want to push a question yes. along that line, too. Uh, governors have never been more in the spotlight in this country as yes, they are today because now. of insecurity. Yes. Of course, we keep hearing that, uh, well, uh, the governors are only figureheads as far as security issues are concerned. Yes. Even though we say uh, they are the chief executive officers, they are the chief security officers of their respective states, that only ends in principle. In practice, that is different. Uh, does that altogether insulate governors from doing much more than they may have done uh, in recent times fighting insecurity? It, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. But it's a very complicated issue. For the governors? For the governors. I don't envy them at this moment at all. Because you have concentrated the entire security apparatus in the federal, and then there is a lot of political implication and ethnic implication. If the governor in Edo State, for instance, goes to the forest, let's be practical here, and then 30 dead bodies are brought out as bandits, and they are from the president's uh, ethnic extraction. Is the president going to promise us that he's going to think that that was an objective operation? That's why everything is going back to the president because of the kind of politics and the kind of federalism that we're on, where we have submitted everything to the presidency. We need to get his assurance that when we are doing what is right and lawful, that we'll get his backing. Are we not going to hear that they are killing? Okay. Now, this thing has been going on in Oyo states, and Oyo people have been subjected to ignominy, dehumanization, and devastation. And then somebody in Oyo state now got up and said, look, you can't wipe out my community in my presence. I'm going to have to do something about it. And he got up Sunday, and he did something about it. And who was the first person to react? Erufai. Who was the first person to react? Che Gumi. Who was the first person to react? Not our elders forum. And what was the coloration of the reaction? Ethnic response. They no longer saw the criminality. The Oyo State indigenous that have been killed. The Oyo State people that have been subjected daily to ignominy. So this is why the governors, and we must, be we must, we must actually here really here protect our governors. That's why I'm expecting the people to get up 
and help the governors to free themselves from the behemoths of federal emasculation. Okay. Let, yes. Let, let's hope uh, that happens as quickly as possible. Uh, uh, Felix, uh, there, is, there is now a, a louder call than ever for our constitution to be tweaked in such a way that governors are now uh, giving more powers uh, to be able to deal with uh, insecurity issues exclusive from the federal, the center, uh, as we call it. I, is that anything realistic? It, it is. You see, he was making a very clear allusion just now to the issue of concentration of powers at the federal center. Mm -hmm. And he did say that if, what would be the body language of the president. You see, this is where constitutionality comes in. The constitution of Nigeria is so constructed that powers flow from the center. And the, because ordinarily, the concept of a constitution is that it shows the arrangement of offices, mm -hmm. that it also shows tenure and the latitude to which you can exercise your powers. Right. And that makes the constitution the ground norm, the law, the general law. And that is why the constitution has the capacity to dictate what each person can do. What you say, so you are acting unconstitutionally or you are acting extra constitutionally because the constitution has stipulated. Now, the Nigerian constitution, as it was given mm. to Nigerians in 1999, was not a constitution that was written by the people. Even though they, write, they wrote in the opening sequence, we the people, we the people did not agree on any constitution. It was written by the military and given to the people. Good enough, every constitution has a clause that says that it can be amended. So it is not cast in iron. It's a document that is subject to review as times change. Change is immutable. You cannot stop change. And as things are changing, you adapt. In fact, the concept of survivor that has given humanity its ability to dominate other species is mm. from the principle of adaptation and improvisation. So in this situation, governors will have to adopt that method. The governors may not be able to change the constitution. Of course, that is another matter. The constitution has to be changed to reflect the divisions, the changes, the transformations that we are experiencing today. That must come in subsequently. But in the event that that one has not been done, mm. what can governors do? Within the immediate point, I was already explaining that point mm. when I said it's a simple matter. You can move from one point to the other. When mm. I use compartmentalization, I said each unit, each part of a state can be seen. And we actually do know that the majority of the bandits, we cannot say all because there's no need to generalize. The majority mm. of them are from a particular ethnic extraction. And whether we hide it or not, even though NBC has ruled out that people cannot write that they are Fulani, that it's only Fulani that are criminals, most of them are of that stock. But not necessarily all headsmen. Hmm. This is the that also go about their yes. legitimate business. They, they are legitimate headsmen. You see, hmm. this is a failure of, EC, of security network in this country. The security system will just say, no, don't say it. It's not, don't say it. If you do like this, I'm not seeing you now, but that doesn't mean you are not seeing me. Of course. So I didn't solve a problem. I only covered my eyes. If the government says we want to address this matter realistically, three days is even too much. Simply send a message that all community heads mobilize people in your area, let us go and know what's happening in our forest. But the question is, are you going to the forest empty out there, bare chested? Mm -hmm. No. AK for seven bullets, they, they, they eject 50 live rounds in a minute. Your own dang gun and your pump action rifle and your English rifle will only shoot two bullets at a time. So before you reload, the other man at the other end would have brought you down. So that is why these assault weapons are not supposed to actually be in the public domain. Mm. They are in the public domain. They are very expensive. In a high number. In a very high number, and they are very expensive. These small and light weapons, they are not supposed to be in the public domain, but they are very much in the domain, and they are in the hands of people who are in our forests. What can governors really do? Governors cannot start buying arms and give to individuals. Governors have been doing advocacy, but they should do more. Every community knows its boundary, hmm. knows its terrain. This is where the federal might has failed us. Now, the federal might would have been, okay, you walk from the top, we walk from the bottom. Governors, give us the intelligence, what is on the ground. The people in that community, you learn to work with them. They will bring out the areas that they know people are occupying because they know the areas that people are occupying. Mm -hmm. And this one, they know the trail in the forest. You know, when you are looking at the forest from, uh, from top, it looks serene, very calm, but beneath, there's activity going on. It's like porridge. Porridge is always hot at the bottom, but the top is always cool. Mm -hmm. Now, inside the forest, there are trails. Hunters. My uncle, my little uncle used to be a hunter in the village. He used to tell me they, ha they know trail. They, they even know the animal trail inside the forest. These people have lived there. The full animal man that may have 
threats from Niger or from Mali, whether it's a bandit, it's a, 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 an ex-militant, he fought in the Chadian war, he came into Nigeria. They are relaxed because here nobody is bothering them. Where they were coming from, they were being bothered. Mm. Mm. So they are at home. They are not just at home now, they are not dictating. If we say we want to end this, it is possible. Every problem has a solution. The right. question is, are you taking the right solution to solve the problem? Because in solving a problem, you can solve it, it will be immediate, that's tactical, it will stop at the time, mm. it can continue later, or you can solve it permanently, it becomes strategic, that's in the long term. Right. So what we need to do is both tactical and strategic. Tactics now is, let us first of all know where they are occupying exactly, and mm. we do know already. Committees, people don't go to farms anymore. I read reports every day that people are not saying they cannot go to a farm. You, if you are living in the city, you, you forget that people are living out there. Just take a drive from Benito to Aochi. As soon as you see a cow run across the road, you see how your heart will begin to palpitate. Because you are afraid that maybe they are blocking the road already because of stories that we have heard. So these people live in the forest. Each forest, uh, let's say the road that goes through the forest, if you clear both sides of the roads, let's say 20, 20 meters on both sides, before somebody run across and come and shoot gun at your vehicle, won't you see the person? Hmm. But these things are not even being done. So there's a local approach, there is a state level approach, there's a federal approach. The federal approach is even the biggest problem. Hmm. Governors do not control the security operatives in their states. That's just the problem. So they're handicapped? They are, of course, their hands are tied, that's just so what Mimo said. Hmm. Their hands are tied, so they cannot really talk. Even if they talk, there is not much they can do. Governor, create the law of Ondo State. Said it openly. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you seven days. Those people who are occupied the forest have to move out. You need to hear the opera from presidency. Mm. And then you have to register as a herdsman, for example. Good. Mm. So we know those who are the actual herders, but people still have to push cows up and down, which are that matter entirely. We will discuss that another time. After this is not the time we will be pushing cows up and down. Mm -hmm. They are supposed mm -hmm. to be in one place mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. Those ones are even doing legitimate business. You should know those ones from the criminals. Recently, there was a case of kidnapping in those state here that has now changed everything to be very, very difficult now to solve. The lady did say then, when we read the report, that she was kidnapped when she was going to church in the Bubai area, at the uh, Ikuenero area, mm. and that she was handed over to kidnappers, eight men in the forest, and that group. So it now means that the criminals now have a network. So there's a syndicate. Syndication, very easy. And they are not, but once they syndicate, the question is, how much complicity do our security forces have in this matter? Because if that kind of thing is going on, thankfully she was rescued by a vigilante set up by the state government in collusion with the security agencies. So if the security agencies want to really wake up, mm. if there's a wake up call, they say, okay, if you do not deliver on this, you will lose your position. It would have been possible. But from the top, the person that is in charge of the country has not spoken. They keep saying Barry is Tassiton, President Barry is Tassiton. We know he's Tassiton, a man that doesn't talk much. But he should be thinking more okay. and be acting more. And that's our present challenge. So the governors mm. cannot do much. No uh, matter uh, what uh, they do. Unless now, they have more, more no latitude. No matter what they do. Mm. At the top, the yes. final decision will obliterate every action they have taken. That is the challenge we are facing. We're going to be joining our Abuja studio in a few minutes. But just to cap it all off, uh, I just want uh, uh, Chris to, to respond to something very, very important. And that should probably keep us all up at night. Uh, Professor Leo Toide, someone that Felix uh, adores uh, a lot of, of the Department of History and International Studies uh, at University of Benin here, time and again has talked about salient issues as they affect security or insecurity in Nigeria. At the point he even established, uh, as it were, uh, a convergence between insecurity and unemployment in, in Nigeria. Is government listening at all? No. Government is not listening. Is government interested? No. When people like us are hell-bent on restructuring, this is what we mean. Countries are ruled by thought, thinking and philosophy. Mm -hmm. If the government on top sees cow economy as the only economy that should be pursued, he's not going to be thinking of the kind of employment that could be generated by massive agricultural activities in those states. It's not going to be thinking of the kind of employment that will be generated by technological you know, uh, innovations you know, by our universities and research centers in, in the country. It's not going to be thinking that. And so whatever policies that is being done by the federating units or the thinking that is going on among the federating units, governors will have a point where they will clash with what they call ex ex exclusive uh, powers. Mm -hmm. The Azura in those states is a case in point. If you left us with Azura, there might not have been need for Ocean. 
But because we have to feed Azura to the federal grid. So that's the point. The point is that there is the, the thinking. I'm worried about the thinking. Hmm. Now, is the government worried about unemployment? If you are worried about unemployment, you will know that the little economy we had left in the forest, you would have protected that. Because the forest has capacity right. to produce and give a lot of employment. Mining goes on in the forest, apart from farming. Extraction goes on in the forest. Hmm. Apart from forest, veget uh, b b b b a cash crop economy. So, and then the food crop economy. So, the government is not listening. Because the government's policies are not, they are, they are, they are, they are strange. So, they are, they are not listening. So, that's where the problem is. And it is because you have insecurity now that you have all sorts of things going on. Because when you have insecurity as the focal point in any nation, you have a lot of infractions mm. underneath. I'm afraid uh, this yes. is the much time we're allowed to, to talk about this issue. Gentlemen, uh, Felix Osereme, thank you for coming. We appreciate you uh, uh, your time. We also want to thank uh, Christopher Ojekebe for you. spending some time with us on this program. A lot of persons have talked about how that the government, members of the public, uh, civil society, and everyone else must uh, make their contribution to fighting insecurity in this country.